I'm Corbett Wall with DV Auction here with your feeder flash for Friday, March the 27th, brought to you in part by A and B Cattle, having their 30th annual bull sale April the 2nd, right here at DVAuction.com, out of Bassett, Nebraska. The Sawyer family there uh, has a long reputation of maintenance-free Sand Hills bred cattle. Don't miss that sale on April the 2nd. Your cow party's over. Uh, some of you guys didn't even know what was going on, but uh, you've missed it. And not to say that your way up cows aren't still going to sell uh, pretty well, and, and they will sell better as we get uh, further down into the grilling seasons. But, uh, but this little pop uh, that we've had here uh, due to the, the panic buying from the coronavirus scare, uh, it's, it's pretty much over, you know. And I try to keep you guys abreast of that stuff, and, and that just shows how, how much you got to keep up to what's going on. You know, we, we kind of talked about your cows uh, coming along there. And then on the Monday reports, when I told you guys this thing had really, really popped, and you only had a few days to get your cows in there and really take advantage of it. But, uh, you know, we had our, our way up cows, you know, the good ones bringing uh, well up into the 70s and, and breaking into the 80s on quite a few of them. Uh, some of your big heavy muscle bulls without too much fat on them, bringing uh, damn near as much as, uh, as fat steers and heifers. And, uh, but uh, it did not last and, and we've lost it. Uh, we got into uh, Friday, Thursday, most of your way up sales were real, still pretty good. Uh, like Dodge City, uh, winter livestock there, they were sharply higher than the cows and bulls. Uh, still selling uh, pretty well then, but man, by the time we got to Thursday, it just had slumped off uh, big time. And, and I mean, uh, you know, your, your cow bids uh, for the buyers that, that are using them were uh, 10 bucks lower from Wednesday to Thursday. And, uh, but, but uh, a lot of your cows standing in the ring at some of your auctions were 10 bucks lower live standing in the ring and your cow bids are, are dressed, of course. But, uh, and the reason it was that much lower is because last week, and, and we're always calling the trend off last week, last week your, your cow plants gave their buyers their order and then told them to get some cows. You know, here's your order, get me two loads. Well, you got to push and, and the guys, you know, push and, and everybody knows that they, they go a little bit beyond their order a little bit. But whenever the market's sucking back and, and they really don't need the cows near as bad, you're going to notice it a lot more. Live basis standing in the ring on your cows. But, uh, you know, if you guys have been going to the grocery stores there for, for probably 10 days, maybe two weeks, you couldn't hardly find a, a stick or a platter of, of ground beef in most of your grocery stores. Uh, but uh, as we get late into this week, uh, most of those uh, shelves have been replenished and, and you can get just about whatever you want there, and including hamburger meat. And, and that's about all your, your people these days, uh, especially your uh, younger generation, knows how to cook anyway. And so uh, they, they go for that first. And that was the first thing to go off the protein shelves was your hamburger meat, of course. Uh, but uh, they, the cow buyers pushed and and really raise those bids and and you know they're really quick to do that most of those cow plants are kind of kind of hand to mouth they, they they will feed some cows probably got a feed lot not too far away that they'll get some cows in and put them on feed just so they can have some uh you know not on a, a massive level but just uh, you know a few loads there to keep them going in case something happens like we just had here happen in the last two or three weeks where they need some cows and the sale barns aren't running many but uh, they, they jumped those bids up there and everything was going good and then all of a sudden they kind of got everything that they, they needed and, uh, and they backed off. And uh, so on your fat cattle, on your fat steers and heifers, you know, we were 10 bucks higher this week with the bulk of your trade happening on Wednesday. Uh, by Thursday, we still, still saw a little bit of trade, but it started uh, coming back down a little bit. But uh, that's amazing that we have gained 10 bucks this week uh, on the bulk of your trade, $10 higher fat cattle, live basis, uh, but still uh, we feel like we're kind of on a downer. And uh, your packers are so good at that. Uh, they've, they've got uh, a lot of your analysts falling in with them, a lot of the guys that write the newsletters and things just piling right in there with them. 
talking about how uh, your Packers have replenished their inventories. Uh, they, they no longer need cattle, and, and it's just amazing. Less than a week ago, uh, they were pulling cattle that the, they were for two weeks out. They were pulling them the next morning. Uh, you know, just uh, just scrambling, 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 uh, you know, running a 70,000 head Saturday, doing whatever they could to, to try to fill orders, and, and now all of a sudden they don't need anything. Are they completely filled back up from 77% uh, gain in, in, uh, in retail beef sales? No, but you got to remember they, they've got a lot of cold storage, and, uh, and they kind of uh, cleaned that out, and uh, so now they've got a lot of flexibility because they, they can store uh, store up a lot of product if they need to they can spread rumors that they don't need any product and they're just so good at that and i hope even though we saw this little pop in the market and we saw uh tyson and some of the other plants given a little bump because they they felt so bad because they were making uh, uh 400 not 400 a head no they wouldn't get by on that an extra $400 on top of what they were already making just on last week's box beef cutout value gains. An extra $400. That was last week. This week they had to give $10 a hundred more for live fat cattle. Uh, they gave uh, some of them gave a little bump, maybe five bucks a hundred uh, uh, live basis on on uh, what they killed this week. But uh, you know, throwing the guys seventy, eighty dollars, maybe one hundred and twenty dollars. When they're making the kind of money that they're making, a lot of their cattle making five, six hundred dollars, not owning them any time at all, and then in some cases not even owning them a week uh, before they get to to cash in there. But uh, unbelievable. But uh, we saw your gains last week on your box beef cut out. Like I like I said, near forty eight dollars, and uh, and so you know they were making all that extra money. Like I said, an extra four hundred dollars. And then so far this week, uh, and I know we saw uh, middle of the week, we saw some losses and, and minor, minor ones, especially compared to the huge gains that they saw the previous week. But we've seen uh, just uh, through this week, we've seen choice cuts drop 18 cents a hundred, not $18 a hundred, 18 cents a hundred, when last week they gained almost $48 a hundred and everybody thinks the world's coming to an end all of a sudden. Uh, we sold the bulk of the fat cattle at 120 and our April spot live cattle futures price is 105.45. I tell you what, and, and what does your, your futures market uh, on cattle, live and feeders have to do with the actual cattle market? Not a hell of a lot if you look over the last several weeks here, but uh, it's just so volatile and, uh, and we've got a crisis here. Uh, we've never seen anything like it before. We don't know what to do. Uh, you, you, there's, there's opportunities there and you don't want to squander them. And talking about squandering opportunities, how about that CNBC interview that I know a lot of you guys have seen uh, floating around on, uh, on uh, social media there. Wow. You know, you've got a person there in a position to speak for the industry and you know and, and they've got the largest uh, cattlemen's association there and uh, and a big job there with a lot of responsibility speaking for the industry and right before he speaks saying that he's speaking for the entire industry uh, not to really quote membership but the entire industry which a lot of the entire industry doesn't claim them but do something like that and then absolutely squander the opportunity Guys, if you get the opportunity, and I don't care if you're talking to your neighbor uh, that, that, uh, that, that's not in the cattle business, or you're talking to somebody at the grocery store or at church or wherever, and somebody asks you what's wrong with the cattle industry, you step up to the mic and you clear your throat and you tell them uh, what's wrong. You tell them that the, the, all the, your cattle producers and feeders and backgrounders, your stocker operators, Everybody are completely reliant on a small number of processing facilities that are owned by mainly four big corporations and uh, it's a monopoly and they manipulate on the cattle end the price and they gouge the consumer on the other end. You tell them that, flat, blank, 
uh, you know, you could flag a car down uh, in the five area feeding region and somebody could tell you that. And then a guy gets an opportunity to tell a cable news anchor uh, and, a, and a, a, lib, a liberal cable news anchor, uh, to, to, for that matter, he has the opportunity to tell it to the world right there. And, and, the, and the news anchor is begging for it and pleading for it. And, and, and I, I'm sure that the, the news anchor there, although he had lots of experience in doing what he did, probably doesn't know which end of the cow the ship rolls out and, and, and could see what the deal was, was begging for it. And you had a representative there of a big cattlemen's association that could not spill the beans. Unbelievable. Let's talk about your board on Thursday. April live cattle futures down the limit. Why? I don't know. I guess because we sold fat cattle $10 higher this week. But $3 down the limit. 105.45. June down 277 at 93.55. The rest of your out front months were down 192 to 285. March feeder cattle down 127 at 130.80 while your, your auctions had bigger receipts and were selling the cattle uh, tens of dollars higher and your, your spot March feeder cattle market uh, on the futures down 127 at 130.80. Of course, it's got to race back down to try to catch that CME cash feeder cattle index. They got pulled down so bad because of all those uh, dirt cheap uh, direct reports that come in or direct sales that were reported and turned in for last Friday. Be anxious to see uh, what kind of stuff they, they bring in this Friday. Of course, uh, everything had to come together already, so they probably won't turn in a whole lot of direct sales. April feeder cattle down 362 at 125.10. The rest of your out fronts on feeder cattle down three and a quarter to four and a half. Your fat cattle trade through Wednesday, 77,400 head. Not a whole lot of trade, a little bit of cleanup trade in the Northern Plains. Why they sold some of them cheaper, I will never know. I'll never understand it. Iowa, 2,900 head confirmed. Selling them from 118.5 to 119.5. That was about steady. They did have a few cattle bring 20 or, or maybe a pinch better up in Iowa, but not a lot of live sales up in that part of the country anyway. But dress sales from 185 to 191 and a fair amount of 185 for, for just 2,900 head confirmed. Why would you take five bucks less than you did the day before? How much has really changed? Nebraska, 4,000 head confirmed for Thursday, 118 to 120. That was steady on a live basis. But dress sales, 185 to 190, which would be steady to five bucks lower. And why would you give five bucks up? Why not 188 or 189? I, I just don't. It, it feel. It seems like the cattle people just uh, feel bad about it whenever they they take a big bite into the market and get a big bunch of a market position back, and they're just so uh, eager to give it back up. Uh, I just. It, it's so frustrating. Um, you look at your box beef cutout values. They were off a little bit, but uh, but you know nothing to write home about. Choice cuts 253.57. Like I said, that's 18 cents a hundred uh, under what they closed uh, at the end of last week. 253.57 down 173. Select cuts 242.17 down 92 cents. Choice select spread of $11.40. 111 loads of cuts, grinds, and trimmings. Your slaughter has been very aggressive. They were replenishing. Remember, they really, really replenish their inventories and they don't need uh, cattle so much anymore. And they, they've uh, slaughtered a whopping 10,000 head more than they did last week. But 484,000 there, uh, that, that was 10,000 more than the same point uh, last week at this time. 7,000 more than the same point uh, last year. They probably won't run as big as Saturday this Saturday and they'll end up not being a uh, bigger kill for the for the week and, and compared to last week. But uh, just amazing. They've got a lot of room in, in your uh, cold storage now. So they've got a lot of uh, levity to do what they need to do there. Real-time index on feeder cattle, DV auction, your automated uh, market reporting systems index right there. Got over 200 sales going into that. 132.84, up 52 cents, so it's kind of settled down there. 
Uh, you compare that to CME cash feeder cattle index, which is coming up as fast as it can, dragging along those 1,600 head of, uh, of directs that the corporates turned in at 102 to 106. But CME cash feeder cattle index, uh, last available 128.50. Uh, and then after it comes in with the Thursday sales, it'll probably get right in there close like they knew it would to March feeder cattle, which are, are less than 131. Of course, they had to race down there to, to catch up with that index, and that was probably the point for turning those, uh, those dirt cheap feeders in. Look at your big sales. Winter livestock, Pratt, Kansas. 5,500 head there, a big sale. Pratt's been really holding back, had a big sale, confidence there. And uh, feeder steers, eight to $11 higher. Spots, as much as $18 higher. All the while, your, your futures markets are down uh, the limit at times and down hard at the close. Your heifers and Pratt, two to $3 higher, but kind of on a light comparison. They just hadn't had too big a runs there because people were real app apprehensive to turn uh, to bring cattle into the sale. Farmers and ranchers, livestock, Salina, Kansas, 4,300 head, eight to 10 bucks higher there uh, for their cattle and calves. Uh, let's look at some individual quotes that I pulled. How about Clarinda, Iowa, Clarinda Livestock Auction, their first sale ever to broadcast over the internet and they did it with dvauction.com. Proud of that. Good friends with those guys there. John Anderson, Frank Hepker, they run a, a first class to, uh, operation there. Russell Sleep, the auctioneer, uh, he's, a, he's a field man for him and that's uh, right close to his home in Bedford, Iowa there. And uh, had a great sale. And a lot of activity over the internet for the first time that they had one. But I think they knew that uh, they had some buyers there that maybe had had their health compromised a little bit and were uh, kind of quarantined, but they still wanted to get in there. And I tell you what, they gave us a call and bang. Uh, within a couple of days we had that whole system set up and it worked fine on Thursday and sure glad that it did but look at this 51 head 697 pound steers at 153.75 let's look at a market out east that we don't talk about very often but they had a great sale and a lot of loads of cattle farmers regional livestock market Glasgow Kentucky look at these 750 to 950 pound loads of steers they bring from 115 to 127 way out east there uh, compare those to those uh, directs that they turned in last Friday with a lot of them at 102 and 103 <laughs> makes you scratch your head I can't get those out of my mind guys I just can't get them out of my mind I'm sorry but your biggest quote for the day on Thursday was Pratt Kansas winter livestock auction 56 head 851 pound steers 138 and a dime. And that's your feeder flash for Friday.